introduction. I'm very glad to be here in, in Cluj and to see that such events are happening, uh, such big events are happening in Romania as well. Um, I will share with you a different perspective or a different angle from what you've seen from Robert Jodescu earlier from the technical perspective. So from somebody who actually lived most of his technical exits in uh, Romania. So let me, let me try to use this. So I've been working with uh, Rav Antivirus in, uh, I started working with Rav Antivirus in 1999, which uh, became very successful in 2001 and then has been uh, uh, bought uh, by Microsoft. That was a different, uh, 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 the first type of exit I lived. Uh, it was a technology uh, buyout, so they actually bought the, not the company, but the, 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 the antivirus engine. So the company vanished after the, this buyout. Uh, they took the technology and they moved, relocated some of the people in the antivirus engine in Redmond, in uh, Washington. Then, with Radu Georgescu again um, and Daniel uh, Nicolescu, we founded we co uh, founded the payment, which became very successful on uh, on the Romanian market as a, as a payment company, and it was so successful that uh, uh, it was bought by Naspers to take it to the next level in 2010. At the same um, um, time, so in 2005 2006, we started Avangate. Um, a different kind of uh, service, a different kind of uh, solution based on the same uh, technology as ePayment, um, which uh, received the first, uh, a, a first round in investment besides the one from uh, Radu in 2011 from 3TS Capital. This is not an exit, but still it's a, it's a huge change that happened uh, after this uh, with the company. And the company um, was um, um, uh, bought by San Francisco Partners, uh, a financial investor in, in, in uh, Silicon Valley in 2013. Right now we're uh, owned by uh, Francisco Partners 100%, uh, so I can say that we're uh, a Silicon Valley based company with most of the uh, team here in Romania. Um, so what have I learned during this uh, during this uh, uh, trip in the last 15 years of working with, uh, as a technical guy with such uh, uh, companies, such uh, events. So there's nothing that can beat the first, uh, the first uh, years, yeah. I can see the, the slide is not actually matching. It's probably somewhere on the back. So, we started, uh, we started with seven people, then we grew to 20, we grew to 40, then um, uh, we grew to 60, then we got back to uh, 35 or something after uh, the exit of ePayment, because we were actually building ePayment and Avangit in, in the same company. We were the same people building uh, two different type of services. Um, I was um, sitting at the table with the whole company. I mean, you, you cannot find this uh, anywhere in, in, in a corporate. You know everybody in, in the room, because there's, there's only seven people, there are, there's only 20 people. I don't know uh, the names of the people, of all the people right now in Avangate. In Avangate there are right now around 20, 220 people. Obviously you cannot know them. I make an effort to know everybody, but I, it's, it's uh, impossible. In the beginning, things get built really fast. I mean, really fast. You get to choose your own technology, so your developers, you're, you get to choose the technology stack they used. Um, uh, you have a, a new laptop, you have a new office, everything is new. So uh, you, can, you build things uh, quite easily. As you grow, things start slowing down a bit because you have to think of integration with clients, we have to think uh, 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 of the technical left you've, uh, you left behind when you grew those we, when we, you build those uh, fast things in the beginning. Also, it takes a village to build a, a, a successful comp company. What I mean by this is, is the fact that it takes a team. 
it's not one person who can succeed that. It takes several, it takes a whole team. It takes the, the people in, 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 in sales, the people in marketing, the people in product. It, it takes great developers. And of course, it takes a great uh, CEO, somebody with a vision, somebody can, who can help uh, take the company to a certain level. As Radu said, we as uh, uh, Romanians can take it up to a third, uh, certain, uh, certain level. Then um, to the next levels, uh, are others who have more experience can, can uh, uh, take the company to such a level. So people in a team are crucial. The more A-level people you have, the more successful, successful you can be. Utility players succeed. An utility player, it's, uh, it's, a, it's somebody, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a term from, coming from sports. So it's, a, it's uh, somebody who can play multiple roles. You can, be, uh, 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 you can play a defensive role, an offensive role. You can be uh, the goalkeeper. Hey, sometimes you can even be the ball. Of course, I also put this the second the second image here to make it more expressful uh, to express uh, what I mean better. Somebody who can uh, wear many hats. This means that you don't need in the beginning like somebody who's specialized, or you don't find in in in, in, a, in a startup somebody who's specialized in a, in a single function. You will find people, or you need people that are specialized in in, in are specialized in several functions. Of course, as you grow. They will, uh, um, they will settle with uh, specific functions. They will get skilled in certain areas. But in the beginning, you need to have more utility uh, players, uh, which, ha which are operational, uh, which have operational skills to do things. Now, this one, shed your ego, learn modesty. Um, I work with people which um, had, uh, which were very, ta very talented, but uh, uh, and they they would they were bringing lots of strategy in the company. But when it when it uh, it came to operational things, they were too bad. They were lousy. I mean, like uh, let's say a business developer. What does a business developer do in a startup? You don't even know what it does. So uh, sometimes you just have to roll up your sleeves. No, no, uh, there's nothing about my sleeves now. Uh, you have to roll up your sleeves and, I don't know, make the coffee or change the water in the water cooler or do something operationally, do something in, in, in the, exp uh, the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet and get it done yourself. If you're, just, uh, uh, if you're just used to, I don't know, build plans and strategy and not be at all agile, uh, then the time will, 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 will run and you'll, you'll lose momentum. So, um, this, this, this is happening also not just on, on, on the business side, but also on the technical side. You will, you will find, you will find uh, um, developers who have been like uh, um, uh, team uh, leaders for two years. They, won't, they, don't, they, won't, yeah, they wouldn't go back to development um, uh, because they, they think is below them to go back to uh, uh, development because they, they've experienced that already um, several years back. Now, it takes product thinking, not project thinking. What I mean by this is that don't do development for, um, for one single uh, uh, customer. Think of your product and build it for several customers. There's, there's this, this trap that uh, most of the uh, startups uh, I've seen uh, that are mostly addressing uh, the business to business market, they're, 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 they're building the product for one single entity. That's not a product, that's like having uh, uh, an outsourced uh, company doing it uh, for you. Again, the corollary to that is that um, you don't need to build the, the, your product in vacuum. You need to have actual clients that can help you this, that you can help uh, uh, build uh, this. So don't ever hard code something for a particular customer in, in your software. Make it general for everybody else. Ma don't build on any kinds of shady features for one single customer that cannot be reused for um, other clients. It's easy to say no, and usually customers understand, because those shady features that they need, 
most of the time they come from the, their marketing departments and uh, uh, it's just one guy who thinks he needs some kind of, uh, I don't know, analytics on user behavior uh, up to, I don't know, what kind of level. Business thinking above technical. Um, it's funny to see that, uh, of course, most of the startups, uh, especially in Romania, have their, their CEO is the technical guy. So you're in, the, you're in business for making money. You have to think beyond technical. You can be a great technical guy, but you need somebody with a vision, somebody who can lead the company on the business side, somebody who actually can think of the money, then can think of revenue, can think of EBITDA. A, de a, develop, a developer, of course, there might be rare cases when this is happening, so you, you, you uh, and don't be fooled by companies like Google who actually had their uh, technical guys on, on, uh, on uh, the management part, on the being a CEO, but normally you need somebody else, not the technical guy, somebody different. You are not as important as your product. You think you're important as your product, but once you see an exit, you understand that is the business value that product brings to the market or to the investor. So, uh, for instance, with uh, Francisco Partners, they want to see the revenue. They want to see the money. They're, they want to see uh, things building up out of Avangate. I'm not saying that they don't care about the people. Yes, they care about the people. The investor cares about the people, but not as much as they care about the product. If the product is working great, then people are on the second level. Sometimes things seem like chaos. So you have to do so many things in a, in a, in a startup that you get to something like this. This is actually a, uh, from Bucharest. You can see the Intercontinental Hotel, and that's how uh, you see the wires that are pumping the internet uh, in Bucharest. So things in a company seems like chaos uh, sometimes. And I, I often uh, uh, liked or uh, wanted more bureaucracy. Log things uh, uh, somehow to get rid of the tribal knowledge. But still, we didn't get to that point um, to have everything documented, because too much bureaucracy can be uh, heavy on your shoulders. But I don't know, somehow we managed to uh, get past, uh, past this uh, uh, stage of uh, organizing the, the chaos or passing the chaos. Partner your customers, don't just sell them. This is something, uh, um, uh, of course, salespeople, uh, when you go, grow bigger, must understand. You need to understand, and product people. So you need to understand the customer needs. You just, you're not there for selling the customers, your customers, your solution. You have to either have been working in, 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 in the same industry, or understand what actually the, your customers need from your products. Why would they use you? And network with them, stay with them, play with them. Because you, if you're messing, this is another thing, if you're messing things up, it's not the product who will save your ass. If you have a bug which will which, which create, I don't know, some revenue loss or some lost clients here and there, it's the network, it's the relationship that matters most in, in uh, such cases. So you have to be with your client and uh, uh, partner with them. Don't get comfy in your job. Everything, I mean, as long as you get successful, things will start rolling. Things will start changing immediately. And uh, uh, if uh, six months ago you you were doing something, now you're doing uh, you're doing something else. I've seen I've seen this happening um, um, so much in in in, uh, uh, in my job, and it's it's still, still happening with the growth we we have every day. Everything is changing because in order to support the growth we have. You have to do lots of things like hire uh, uh, or train your managers, uh, hire new people, and you have to find, uh, you have to have specific roles that for people that are doing this. Splitting a company is is painful. So I told you earlier that e payment and Avangate were the same, were the same, uh, uh, were the same company. So when e payment has uh, been bought by Naspers in 2010, we had to split the company. So 
Some people had to go to Ipemo, some people had to go to Avangate. This is very painful. Uh, this is the most painful part. I mean, getting red or, or splitting a, 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 a company in two, having valuable people in both teams, right? Besides, of course, the technical part. So we were using, we were sharing the same piece of code. Removing a, a feature, it's even more difficult than, than adding the feature. And it requires the same steps you, you see in, in feature development. You, you, it requires testing, it will require uh, a deep analysis of what can be impacted if you remove that particular feature. Imagine this happening at uh, this scale. It took like six months to remove um, or to split the features in two separate platforms in this case. So you immediately find out if you're successful or not. If you fail, you fail. You, you will notice this if you don't grow. You notice that one year from now, you're still three people in the company. You don't have that many users. You don't have that, many, uh, uh, that much revenue. Uh, but the thing is that if you, if you, uh, you, you, you can stay in a startup phase forever. I mean, except if you want to have like a, like a family-owned uh, uh, business with one or two clients, you can be in this stage. But, but if, you want, if you want to succeed, succeed you, ha you either die or, or uh, uh, succeed. So if you succeed, the company will change uh, dramatically. Um, as Radu mentioned earlier, uh, some some uh, of my uh, or mine and my colleagues painful painful uh, changes was hiring a new level level of management uh, hire somebody on top of you to play the first uh, uh, the first uh, the first uh, executive role uh, this is very difficult then another difficult part is delegating or giving up on the things you were doing for years or for months things that you were building up. And this handover, this giving up of things, it can only be done with trust. If you invest trust in the other, in, in the other people, if you invest uh, uh, know-how in the, in, in the other people, um, you'll have to train. If you succeed, you'll have to train management. You'll have to start focusing immediately on, on things that are not uh, uh, bringing you any, any revenue. So if you were using like an Excel spreadsheet as your CRM, you'll have to invest in a, in a, like a real CRM system. You'll have to invest in, in a <coughs> uh, lots of things like training your managers. Because um, somebody will just uh, wake up in the morning and will be, I don't know, a team leader. Does he have a prop the proper training to do that? Does he need to go to uh, school to learn the basics? Uh, <clears throat> communication barrier, barriers will, will start uh, appearing, especially when, when dealing with uh, a, a company like ours, which has several offices across the globe. Communication will uh, uh, be majorly uh, affected. So you'll have to understand the tone from everybody's emails and 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 uh, um, not interpreted wrong. Your ethics might not be the other's ethics, as a new layer management can be added on top of you, or new executive person or, or uh, senior persons can be added in, in in your team. Your ethics or your culture might might might, might be different than the other's uh, uh, culture. So you want you want to understand why. They're doing business differently. You will think that it's 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 wrong to do business like like this one. Like, uh, 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 and I have a few examples that I can share you share with you after the um, uh, after this. You either have to change and educate yourself about your new role, or um, try to um, let the others understand why it's wrong to do business in, in such a way. And of course, sometimes you succeed or sometimes you fail. But in any case, there's no, there's, thank you, my stress. Yeah, I still have two minutes. Uh, you'll either uh, succeed, uh, okay, I lost my idea. Thank you. 
Never join a startup thinking you'll be rich. This is, this is probably uh, something that you um, heard from somebody, from lots of uh, uh, people. You have a bigger chance of winning the lottery. That's because most of the startups fails, fail. I mean, uh, don't be fooled by the success of uh, Facebook getting listed. Don't be fooled by success, success, success uh, of Google. There are so many others which, which have failed uh, to become uh, the next uh, uh, um, the, the next fa Facebook. Uh, according to some stats I've read, only 1% of startups to, uh, succeed. So you're taking a big, big risk. So don't play, don't start working in a startup if with uh, imagining that you'll, you'll, you'll be rich sometime. Um, just join the startup for the pure thrill of it. Just join a startup for, with, for um, uh, the passion. Don't expect to retire when you're done. Of course, you, if you're successful and you're part of some exits, you can get a nice financial bump. But uh, definitely, unless you're uh, a financial invert, investor, and even in this case, like uh, we have the best example in, in the room with Radu, you won't retire. You'll stay in the game. You'll love the game. You'll start working more. Your sphere will uh, will grow, and you have to you'll you'll. Um, feel the need to build more. This is a, 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 a rough one. Cherish company, DNA, and culture. Sometimes, so this is, it's very easy to say that the culture, it's an easy thing, but it's, it's one of the hardest things I've, uh, I've seen. Keeping the culture, the company culture uh, at the same level when you grow. It's totally difficult uh, to, to do that. You will have the pressure and you will feel the pressure of hiring new people. I receive this pressure like every day. Hire new developers, hire new developers, hire new developers. Yes, of course, we can hire new developers, but if you drop the bar, if you hire uh, lower quality developers, let's say, in my case, the, company, the, the overall, the average uh, uh, company culture will drop, and this, is, and this will be your standard. You don't, want to, you don't want to get there. Keep a high standard. Work with uh, 18 players. Of course, there, there can be hires where uh, you will see um, the, 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 your, your hires are not actually met, meeting your, your um, um, company culture. And it's, in a startup, it's, it's rather difficult to hide. I mean, they will, everybody will see you, and uh, uh, everybody will see that you have a negative attitude. You will see you, will see you as, as being different from, from the others. Get, you have to get rid of uh, uh, these uh, cultural, uh, cultural problems. And this brings me to my last slide. Be proud of what you've done. Whether you succeed or fail, you have to be pri proud of the things uh, uh, you've done. You have to speak with pride about uh, uh, your things, with passion, and um, um, of course, because if you're not proud of your accomplishments, then uh, what you have, uh, what have you accomplished uh, so far? That's uh, about it. Thank you. So, I, of course, I invite you to talk more. Let's 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 use this my slides like uh, as a pretext to discuss more. We have a, a Q and A session after that in one of the rooms. Philip will give you more information. Room 32, third floor. Okay, or not? Oh yes, we will. But we will have still yeah. one question. We still have one question now. Oh, okay. So we just take one last question, and it's a very tough one since you're keeping everybody from lunch. So the person who's asking the question should rather make it worthwhile. So the first one to raise their hand has a chance to keep everybody from lunch for a couple of seconds. Hello. So I'm right here. <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, so you said for some um, for some of your uh, expertise in like business-wise expertise, you need to hire a, a bigger CEO than yourself and delegate stuff to the guy, and he will, should be able to take you to the next level. How do you make sure that you make the proper delegation? Uh, that would be one question, sorry, Philip, I have two. <laughs> uh, the other one is you used culture and uh, average in the same sentence, so how do you compute your culture so that you know you are on the average beyond or um, on 
<laughs> either side of um, of this average. Okay, let me uh, try if I let me see if I understood your questions. Um, first was about how you can you make sure that uh, the um, uh, the hires you get are properly uh, suited for the company, right? You can just yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, it's 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 like in uh, all Sorry. other business functions. Um, you have to you have to uh, gamble. You have to use your know-how and trust. You can look at the other guy and see if uh, it's suitable for uh, uh, for the company. It's it's there's no recipe for success uh, here. It's like any other new hire. It's like getting a new developer on board, getting a new manager on board. It's the same risk you're taking. But as it uh, pretty risky. How do you know you have delegated and not dropped all those tasks to the new guy who of might not un be on the average of the culture you you were you were mentioning? Yeah, the, basically, the tendency your tendency is to keep the things uh, uh, with you, the things that you've done before. You you're doing the best things uh, uh, ever. It's not the other. So you'll have to follow up with uh, 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 when in delegating or giving, giving up things. You'll have to uh, uh, share the knowledge and be with them step by step up to a certain point when it doesn't take, uh, uh, if it doesn't take uh, uh, too much of your space, too much of your time. So you have to follow up with uh, when delegating. And okay. how do you compute the culture? Okay, guys, so I know that you're a very brave Thank question you. asker, but uh, one question is the maximum which we're going to take. Everybody else will be hungry otherwise. So thank you very much, Christian. I really appreciate it for coming here.